So it gives me great pleasure to welcome Professor Jianan, Assistant Professor of Strategic Management at the University of Southern California Marshall School of Business. Professor Jia holds a PhD in Strategic Management from the Rotman School of Management at the University of Toronto and a BA in Economics from the Guanghua School of Management at Peking University. Her research interests include corporate, uh, corporate political strategy, business governance relations, and corporate governance in international business. Her research has been published in the Administrative Science Quarterly, Management Science, Strategic Management Journal, Organizational Science, and Journal of Politics. Her work is mainly empirical, but also incorporates economic modeling. She serves on the boards of the Strategic Management Journal and the Journal of International Business Studies. Today, she'll be speaking on firm's strategic use of political connections. Please join me in welcoming her. Thank you, Yuan. Thanks very much to Yuan for the kind introduction, and thanks to, uh, to the uh, Center for Chinese Studies uh, for inviting me. It's really a great honor to be here. And I heard that you don't have a lot of business scholars visiting the center. And recently, you know, we started a, um, a USC Marshall, the business school, USC Marshall China Workshop, where actually we brought together business scholars who look at China setting, how to do business in China. So I thought that what we were trying to model after, because giving what my exposure to Yuan, what you guys have achieved here, clearly very organized, successful. Um, so hopefully it will be more interac interactions. Um, and so the, the, the paper I'm going to present today is actually about, is on political connections, a topic on which we actually spend the entire morning with a bunch of really brilliant doctoral students to discuss. Sorry, I'm just walking around this like this, it's, uh, <laughs> trying to adapt to this very interactive uh, setting. <laughs> um, and, and about political connections. Um, so uh, it is well known that connections with the <laughs> two politicians brought a lot of benefits for firms in terms of product market, factor markets, regulatory support, and all of that. And that is not news. And um, in my world, in strategic management, where we look at how firms achieve competitive advantage, i.e. superior performance, we th a lot of people think of political connection as a, con a, a type of resource owned by the firms. Uh, pretty, mu pretty, mu pretty much like a technology you own out there or um, some, some talent, human capital you own out there that help the firms to achieve high performance. It's a resource, it's a valuable resource, therefore it's useful. And I want to argue that it's actually a pretty unconventional type of resource because, you're going to see this here, it is essentially, it's not in a piece of like the patent lying there waiting to be used, is the benefit, so the benefit of political connection depends on another individual, another economic agent, if you, if you will, who has his own incentives and capabilities of providing this benefit to the firm, that, that is the politicians. So this is what with this paper was trying to look at, um, which is the benefits that firms can obtain from political connections depends on the politicians, how much the, the, the other guy is willing to let you, let, let you as a firm grab. And so it, it, the other politicians may have in their own incentives. For example, there is some literature in the economic and political economy that uh, about favor exchange. It's a model of favor exchange, which is that the politicians allow firms to take away benef grab benefits because they expect something in return. And these, these, so this is manifested in some, in some context where the politicians ask the connected firm to help them out by hiring a lot of people and making a wasteful investment, but in politically contested areas around election seasons. So that's, what's a, um, that's a, some arguments in the econ economics world. And it has never been looked at, in, at least in, in strategy, um, where connection is a resource. And of course, politicians have their own capabilities. Where are they able to del deliver the, um, the promises they give to firms? Um, there are constraints to do that. And I'm going to go one hour. So, but then the key thing is that the context matters to the extent to which firms can take away benefits from the political connections. So, this is not a, just a piece of r valuable resource lying to be utilized anytime the firm pleases. So, that's my uh, main tenet. Um, we're going to examine that in this in in the context of firms' location choices. 
choosing where to substitute to, to, to operate that's one of the major business operations of firms and again there's a huge literature very traditional like um, um, uh, in terms of there are economic factors that firms to uh, need to consider um, um, <laughs> regarding where to set up their subsidiaries and starting from Marshall 1920s all the way to, uh, to 2000 um, to 2013 and what we want to ask is is, is that how does how, does, how do political connections matter? The connections that firms have in the candidate location matter to the firm's likelihood of going into that location. All right. So before, just in case I don't get to my end of my slides, here's a foreshadow so that you can, uh, you can look at it and then if you leave, you run. Um, and first of all, our question, primary question, are firms more likely to, to set up a subsidiary in the location where they know the local politicians? Overall, the answer, oh, okay, so we can look at, look at it in the context of all publicly listed firms in China. And the overall, the answer is yes, they are going like, to more likely to go to their connected buddies, but not when those buddies are in the locations that have a lot of high unemployment. And another part I didn't put in there are uh, physical problems, right? Um, and especially when your connected buddies hold positions that are responsible for solving those social problems. So that's the main, uh, main story we're going to try to tell. All right. um, OK, so this is a little bit of theory of the political in, the incentives of politicians. Um, and why pol what, 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 what incentives politicians have in terms of uh, helping firms or func doing other functions? They have their private uh, interests, right? That they, payment, whatever. And also, they have their political career um, in mind. And that means that a lot of political career, at least in the China context, depends on the local economic development and the social stability. Right? So if your, uh, your, your, your place is booming and is, is socially stable, um, that contributes to the political track record of the politician. And um, so how do politici politicians, wh how do they achieve all these goals? Well, for one thing, you, you might think that fundamental way, you just do good things and then promote long-term economic de development in your region and therefore you get promoted and everybody is happy. But um, that takes a long time and that's a lot of effort. A shorter way, a shortcut, shorter term benefit. Um, if you really need help, a lot of politicians have the incentive as shown, as demonstrated as by, um, by some economic theories. They seek support, at least as a short-term relief. Um, especially here is that we have unemployment problems in our region. I'm going to get my buddies to help me employ a bunch of people, stabilize the situation, make people at least happy in the shorter term. So, so that's on the side of politicians, why they would actually generate, contribute to, how they contribute to the, the final sort of the findings that we, I just, we just showed you. And on the theory for the cost of firms, for economists, a common question here is that, it's a favor exchange, right? And it should be reciprocal. If you, as the government, ask me to overemploy people, you're going to compensate me by giving me something in return. Therefore, it's going to break even. It's not going to deter my entry into your location. So this is true um, in the theoretical uh, 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 equilibrium. Um, but then there are a lot of actually uh, concerns regarding the paybacks. Because if you look at it as political contracting, it's not enforceable. There's no way you can get the politician to deliver what he has promised. And this is a, there's a timing issue, which is the firm is asked to do something ahead of time before everything, anything else happens. So there is a hold up risk there. I do this, and I'm immersed into location. You will renege on your promises. That's a common hazard we look at, contractual hazard we look at in the business world. And this asymmetric information. Is this guy really is my buddy, really have the power? <laughs> and this guy is going to, is, uh, how the guy is going to hold up in the, in the, in the next anti-corruption campaign? Is he going to be in, the po in, in, in power? So these are all the questions that firm had in, in mind. Therefore, uh, therefore um, even though in theory, I employ people for you, you give me some political benefits in other ways, in theory, you should balance things out, but in reality, I, as a firm, would ha actually still have a lot of concerns about having to, especially having to employ all these people before the politicians deliver all these benefits. Right? So these are the reasons that, that, um, that actually drives our main, main theory.
right? Um, so essentially, we are so we are trying to. Um, um, so essentially, we're trying to ask a question. So, so you know, you got, for, for, so, so far it's pretty clear where we are going with this, right? We're, look, we're going to look at the connection, uh, connected politicians going to locations where unemployment and is high, and the physical there are the physical revenue problems. And the theory tells us that your connected politicians can ask the firm for help, and that is a, that is a concerning. That is. To, be, to say the minimum is risky for the firms. Sometimes the risk is so high that firms would actually avoid their buddy's location. That's where we're going. And um, connections, well, if you're, uh, <laughs> for, uh, so for methodological uh, purposes, uh, we don't want connections to be, uh, I want to use, I know there's a general audience. I'm going to throw out, your, out the word first and then we'll, and then we'll leave it there. Connections that, all, almost always endogenous. You build it for a certain re reason. Therefore, um, a lot of economic research, they search for exogenous shocks to these connections, which is that all of a sudden someone you know springs out of nowhere. It's like a drop from heaven in the location. And we happen to have such an opportunity in this. In here, um, it's because of the geographic rotation of politicians. So this is not you voluntarily, you as a a politician voluntarily leave the post and go to another, uh, moving from uh, Ann Arbor to, uh, to Los Angeles. This is someone else trying to rotate you there. So we're looking at the party secretaries and mayors. These are top two leaders. We also have information on all the other leading positions in the city. We just thought it's, it's more conservative and uh, uh, pointed, or more just focus on these two positions. But if you have other suggestions about what else we could do with the other data, we could, we're more than happy to hear about that. So for the city level mayor secretaries, they are determined by this. So where they go next, they're determined by this organization department of the Central Committee of the Chinese Communist Party. If you don't know where it is, it's this one. It's an unmarked grand building <laughs> in, in the center of, of Beijing. And meet the largest HR department on Earth. And so if it's US equivalent, these this people in this mysterious building um, are marked, no signs. I think so. Um, they in charge of um, assigning all the, the, the personnel decision of all the governors and vice governors in the, the states, the mayors and vice mayors of all major US cities, um, and, and also the top 50 or 100 largest firms in the US, ExxonMobil, and all that. And, and um, the major, um, uh, the leader of major newspaper, Wall Street Journal, and New York Times, um, and, and a major think tanks, Heritage Foundation, mm -hmm. all those Brookings institutions, and um, presidents and, uh, of major universities, definitely including University of Michigan. Um, and they, um, what else? I'm, I'm, I'm missing something else. They do a lot of things, right? Um, and my American colleague told me that in the US equivalent, this is called Illuminati's. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what they do. But then the question is, what is the criteria in which they, they promote or demote or rotate people? Well, it's actually unclear. Um, so there's a lot of researchers trying to back it out. And there's a, first of all, there's a, appear to be a len lengthy list of things they look for in people to evaluate them and make personnel decisions. Their age, education, administrative expertise, GDP growth. Li and Zhang look at, look at um, um, and the other jazz, not me, it's another. It's a brilliant um, political economist, young one in UC San Diego. Um, in Jia Ruxue. And so the, uh, at least the province level, <coughs> GDP, growth, GDP growth appeared to predict most of the promotion demoting, at least in the 90s, of the top tier of leaders in the province level. And political faction ties, some research point to that, and social stability. And more recently, envir environmental protection, because it starts to, 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 uh, to catch a lot of uh, to, uh, to social attention. But at the end of the day, so in the, at the end of the day, oops, the organization department, they, they made the process intently opaque to avoid lobbying by different political factions because the, uh, this fight over at least the, the, the city level uh, leaders, they probably represent the most fierce political struggle 
um, of the entire political system. So that's, that's their intention. And uh, there is a financial, I think it was a Financial Times article about what people infer about from these old processes. So these are criteria, and these guys not only, they, they, have, um, they have objective like metrics, they eva evaluate the metrics, they do interviews with the candidate, with their relatives, with their colleagues, sometimes behind the candidate's back, and they also have light detectors and have all kinds of uh, very resourceful <coughs> way of assessing a person. Right, so so far it is very it, it is opaque, and um, let me say let me one one more thing about about geographic rotation. Uh, this is a necessary but not sufficient condition for a local official to be promoted, um, which is that is oftentimes the, the career path is you've been you as a local a leader you've been rotated to a lot of different geographic places. Not always, not always the rising stars are put in economically developed regions because, you know, we know diminishing re returns, maybe it's easier to build up track records if you're, go you're going to more backward, backward region. Um, sometimes they're rotated to, so, uh, um, okay, let me say a little bit. So why do they rotate people? Um, there are a few theories about it. The most prominent of which is that this is an effort to dismantle local network. If you grow too big in the location, we're going to uproot you and throw you somewhere else. You're not, not going to throw the central power. Um, of course, some people say it's a training purpose, it's monitoring, and it's kind of getting information about the, about the person. And apparently, the dismantled local network has a pretty de deep historical root in China, uh, where it so happens like so many um, um, turnovers of dynasties were caused by local political elites. Right? So that's. Um, and so that's the essential uh, idea about the geographic location of politicians. The key thing here, okay, let me, let me just say to tell a little bit more about the summary stack. Um, in our sample, which I'm gonna show you a little later, about 56% of politicians, um, uh, the, uh, the politicians who has ever been mayor or um, were secretary at the city and level and above have never been rotated to elsewhere. You can safely assume that they are doomed. Their political career is, is not going anywhere. 44% has ever been uh, at least moved once. And each term officially is five years. In our sample, on average, if a politician stays in the position for some point five years. And this number changes when you change sample. Some of my colleagues who, who look at a bigger, a wider, uh, a bigger sample, including not only the top two positions, they found a smaller number of years that each politician stay in, in power. Um, so the point to, to us in this paper is that it's difficult for firms to manage. To firms, it's like a shock. It's exhaustion shock, shock. All of a sudden, the emperor's in the front top, abduces your guy, throw him in some, in some other locations. Um, so that's how we use this, um, how we use this piece of information here. Um, and obviously, in the political science world, the question of where, uh, where people are rotated to and who are rotated, they are central questions that we are not able to answer at this moment. That I personally, I think is not a problem for this study, but personally, um, it's not satisfying for me. I, I, I want to understand a little better about this um, political promotion. All right. Oops. This is a basic setup. So city A, um, um, there's a headquarter. So it's, it's a headquarter of a publicly listed firm X, and I happen to be the mayor of that city. <laughs> so my assumption is that, um, um, so I do. So the way we define political connection here is the location, and we our definition rests heavily on this context because, number one. Public listed firms in China are highly elite, prestigious. Uh, th to this day, about 3,000 of, of them are scattered ar around 300 plus prefecture level cities. And in our sample, way before, like 1,000 of them. So they are the best of the best, so they're more likely to know the leaders of their cities. And, and also, oops. in order to get publicly listed, it's unlike the US, you need, a, you need to compete, firms need to compete for administrative quota that, that is sent down by the central government. And um, as a result of which, oftentimes local governments help their own firms to compete with other firms for the listing quota. So you can safely assume that in order to get listed, you've got to have to be connected to the local government, to the city level, at least the city level government. So those are the, 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 um, the assumptions 
on, on which we, we, made it, we build our political connection measure, which is that um, a listed firm would know the leaders in their, the two, at least the top two positions, leaders in their headquarter city. Right? In 2003, um, I was moved to CDC uh, on my way to be a promotion. Well, even in reality, in 2003, I, I moved to Canada to start my PhD program. Um, and then, 2006, the firm is thinking about expanding. It's, it's thinking about setting up another subsidiary. And all of a sudden, whoops, I'm here, CDC. So that is our setup of, we're trying to look at, in 2006, is the firm more likely to choose CDC? C C CDC among all the other potential 300 um, prefectural cities that firm could potentially go into, with the exception of the headquarter city, of course. All right, all right. so data. Uh, we have all the publicly listed firms um, and their subsidiaries between 2003 and 2009. That's combed from the annual report. I'm gonna tell you, 2003 to 2009, it took us two years to hand code all these information, just scattered in their annual reports. Um, we know the locate, we know the subsidiaries, new subsidiary location, industry registered capital, and some ownership. Um, and we all, all know all the cities. And here's a quick summary stat: about one third of the firms would sub, uh, uh, would would set up a at least one new subsidiary every year. So these are pretty active spending and of those who uh, of those who uh, set up at least one new subsidiary every year on average they set up 1.8 so this is a fast expanding sort of uh, group of firms and where did it go where did they set up their next subsidiary um, about only f uh, so 80 86 percent of firms have ever have at least have one new subsidiary subsidiary in the time window um, in a location that is different from the whole headquarter city. So most of them have tipped their toes outside their, their headquarter city. And of those, um, so, so of those, um, of the new actual new subsidiaries established in 2000, in our, in our, in our time sample, in our sample, um, 46, sorry, 45% were located in the headquarter city. So it looks like what happens is most of firms tip their toe outside, but there are a lot of them are more likely to, sub to set up within their own comfort zone. But that's still enough variation for us to uh, explore. So second part is the political career of the city leaders, actually uh, including other um, politicians as well, which we is restrict that sample to the, the two positions. Um, and we cross check to make so that's how we we we, we, we kind of match the firm's <coughs> location to the leaders and also we know where where uh, who are the leaders of the new candidate location for the firm at any point in time all right so key measures so this is uh the key measures i've told you which is which is location um so we define political connection by location and we and we know in any candidate location the firm would consider going into whether, this with dummy, whether the firm knows someone there, how many people the firm would know, and the ye total years that the, my connected buddy had worked in my headquarters city, and also how many years has, has passed since he moved outside there, out there. So we're gonna mostly use the first dummy variable without, having, uh, without ex using so much, there's a lot of variation for us to use. So the basic setup, if you're only in the data structure, it looks like this. The data structure is year, year, each year, each firm, a bunch of three, 330 prefectural level cities. This firm enter or not, is the city connected or not. So for those of you who are into data, that's the structure of the data. And we use condition logic model. And for just one, one word, one sentence for economists in the room, that X actually had the firm year fixed effect, so which is very powerful. Um, Uh, okay, so let me quickly, quickly. Did I anger anybody by doing saying that? Okay. Okay. Um, so I'm going to very quickly um, provide the answer of the two whether firms are. So sorry, we don't have a graphs yet. It's very hard to, to graph condition loaded models. We're still working on it. Um, and I have to show you some models, but trust me, for 
for my interpret interpretation. So first of all, uh, if you look at the coefficients here, it means the positive coefficients is that if the location um, all else equal, lots of controls, which I did not include here, if the loc a candidate location have a body, well, mayor or the, or, 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 or the, the mayor or the um, pocket secretary of the, of the city um, is someone I know, then I'm more likely to choose that location over the other 200 something um, candidate cities. And, uh, but, and then the, but then this positive effect is tempered if that location actually has high unemployment rate. So, so meaning that, so, so meaning that, uh, um, um, so if you were to look at it as a, if it's a graph, my, I'm more likely going up, more likely to go to a place where I have connections, but then this steep line is gonna be much flatter when that location, connected location has high unemployment rate. So we interpret it as a, being consistent to our, to our uh, story. So the, it's a hesitation generated by um, connected location, but that has unemployment rate. Okay. And similarly, we, we actually separate out whether my connected body holds the position of the party secretary or the mayor. So here's the assumption. They are, both the, they are both the leaders of the firm in the location. Sorry, they are the leaders of the city, not the firm. Party secretary and mayor. Um, and um, they are equally responsible for the, the entire well-being, economic development of, of the place, but with, with somewhat different emphasis. For the party secretary, the obligation is slightly geared towards maintaining social stability, as opposed to the mayor is slightly geared towards economic development. Um, so our theory is that um, if your connected body is, you're only connected to the, uh, to, to the, to, to, uh, to the secret secretary whose responsibility has, has heavier component, greater component of social, of social welfare, um, then you are more likely to ask to help out, increasing the cost of using connections. That's what we're trying to look at here. But I'm gonna, okay, so I'm gonna skip this and since, so I'm gonna very quickly give you some takeaway and I'm gonna throw out something that is really cool because given this great audience, I really want to start a conversation here. Um, so key takeaway so far is that location choice is a highly calculated move. And sometimes, and also whether I pursue my connection into a location is a highly calculated move. Sometimes form, firms actually avoided connected locations. Um, because of the cost of ex expected cost from being asked to return political favor ahead of time, um, and that's wh actually what we found. Um, and and now that I have you here, I want I kind of wanted to squeeze in a subsequent study we we have again in this in this setting, which is that uh, whether political connection affects the distance between my home my home city and the potential city I could go into. Um, so in the international business, so we're going to group questions at the end. So in the international business world, it's always they say, so the basic tenet there is that I don't want to go to a place that's, so, that's too different from, from my own location. And we're, we're trying to say that uh, that can be, so that distance defined not only by geographic distance, but how different that place is economically from, my, from, from, from where I am, and also politically different from my home country, or in, the, in their world, in, in here is home city. And that is indeed the case, and some of that might be changed if you know someone in the location. So our main goal here, again, the, oops, again, that is not quite, um, so this is like the main thought, this is a preliminary analysis. We, we think that your connected body in the potential location can help the firm overcome the distance created by, sorry, economic distance, and what they have here is like uh, administrative distance referring to different political systems, then that is pretty kind of straightforward, right? You're, you have someone in that political system, they're gonna help you reconcile the difference. But your connected body probably will not help firm overcome the cultural distance. 
um, in that um, you are not going to become more socially sort of uh, socially smooth when dealing with local business people because just because you have a buddy in the government and you are not going to um, automatically start to uh, to understand better of local consumer needs just because you have a connected buddy in the government so that's where we're coming from and what I want to really uh, I would really like to show you so we'll go to uh, 12 30 <coughs> wow I'm just giving too quick Okay, right. So that's that's our um, our prior before actually looking at any any data. So our prior is that political connection can help us reduce the concerns over the fact that my candidate location is very different from my home location in terms of economics economic conditions than political conditions. But it probably not help if the candidate location um, is different from a cult from a cultural perspective. So there's, that's the cool thing that I want to show you about, which is that um, we have to measure culture within China, different regions of culture. And I'm going to report to you, there are two things we, we thought are, will be really useful, but, but at least interesting to us, and so far they have been useful. Number one is the dialect. We're trying to look at the dialect, dialect zones, and it looks like this. So there are about 17 major dialect zones and 125 sub-dialect zones. Um, I am from somewhere here, and any dialect in this area will, look, will sound like foreign language to me, right? And so that's, so we're assuming, of course, dialects is highly correlated with geography, uh, but they don't have to correlate <laughs> with administrative boundary of the geography. Um, so that's a like little bit variance we're trying to use. And another um, measure we're, we're trying to use is, which we obtained from our economic fr economist friends, is this a, a, sh a migration shock that occurred during the Cultural Revolution. A lot of youth, high school students, um, junior high school students, were sent from big cities to countryside during the Cultural Revolution. And I assume this is not an audience that I need to explain what Cultural Revolution is, right? Including my, my own parents. Um, so economists, um, so economists would actually, um, uh, there's me constant studies to show that, so these folks were sent down, a lot of them returned to the city a few, e few years later, uh, or many years later, and that actually created a tie between these two locations. And in this paper, my co which my colleague, um, done by my colleague, they show that this tie actually um, transferred information um, uh, between the two, 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 two cities. Not to say just one individual, this Sendang youth, the person himself, now all of a sudden have a great network, but this person becomes a, be, becomes a source of information about, um, about the other location and similarly to the other location about the city. So in their, in their work, they were looking at the information about uh, the reform to the reg registration of Hu Kou Gai Ge. And that, that information flew so quickly to regions, more quickly to regions where actually received a lot of the Sendang youth in the past. So that's the historical shock that they used and we're trying to use as well by arguing that if, if these two locations were tied, so if s e either my location received a lot of folks from another location or my location sent a lot of folks to other locations, w there is, we are more familiar with each other, with each other, because of this, this information, the information bridge. Right. So this is um, uh, these are the ways in which we measure the subculture, regional culture in, in China, which I personally am really uh, I find it really exciting. Uh, do we take questions during the talk or? Oh, sorry. So Cha first, and then we'll go here. No, that's fine. That's please. So I'm thinking about the the results of the early study. Yeah. Because you were talking about the negative coefficient of the interaction term with uh, unemployment rate. Yeah. I'm wondering to what extent the unemployment rate is, cap is capturing the lack of economic development in that region, so yeah. the result can be interpreted such that yeah. firms are more likely to go to an area where you have political connections, but if the area has is lower in terms of economic is lower in terms of economic development, that may reduce their likelihood yeah. to so there are two things we could do, we do only do one thing. So, so far what we could do is we, we're throwing as many controls of economic conditions as, as we can. Therefore, therefore, the um, unemployment rate captures all the residual variation that is left a bit behind after controlling for economic GDP development, population, all those things. 
And um, 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 but then, uh, if uh, if, we, if this is economic audience, they're going to ask us for for some exogenous shocks to unemployment, um, which we could explore as well. Uh, but so far, the, my answer to you um, is uh, we try to control for some of that. But this concern remains: what is unemployment? Right? How does it? It's not like it's, again, it's not a, a idiosyncratic thing that happened to the to the location. It's tied with a lot of economic conditions. That we we, we take that. Criticism. So I have qu sorry, we have a question here. Yes. I actually have quite a few questions, okay. but I'll try to. Let's speak, let's speak one. And maybe we'll to, yeah. like I'll pick two. Okay, okay? if Sounds you don't good. mind. <laughs> um, okay, so there's a lot of writing about how local connections influence levels of enforcement against connected firms. Yeah. Uh, but here you kind of give. Um, another layer of that, how political connections influence actual business decision making. And, and you look at that only at the uh, choice of locality or, or local registration of the business. So I'm wondering, first of all, um, uh, what did you account for? So for example, you mentioned the change of location for the subsidiary. I would assume that there are different considerations between a subsidiary registration than the actual uh, parent company, yeah. where do they choose to uh, to register? Or did you account for tax incentives, level of enforcement in the different prov uh, um, uh, provinces or cities and so on, which I would assume are major considerations as well when the firm moves? So in our current regression, we not only have the headquarter firm fixed effect, we also have target location fixed effect, meaning that when you interpret results, it's the changes within a, a, a candidate location. So our results are not driven. We're not comparing uh, candidate location, um, like where, um, I'm like, my call, like, for example, we're not comparing uh, Nantong versus Yangzhou as mm -hmm. a candidate location. We're looking at changes within Nantong, mm -hmm. right? So, um, and of, or, of course, you can argue maybe the tax incentives and things are can, can definitely change within, can definitely re change within location. Um, so I think it, that is po it is definitely possible, and so if these changes are are are, <coughs> are implemented across the board for all the firms in this location, it shouldn't matter for us. It only matters for us if these changes are actually more favorable for certain t certain type of firms, mm -hmm. and that is act essentially our mechanism here. That if you know someone, so remember our primary effect of connection is positive. If you know someone there, there's a lot of gold for you there, including maybe policy and tax and all, all those information. So I think what you describe is definitely that that's something firm will have to, they will all, almost always look into when they, when they are trying to look at new location. Um, it's just the extent to which it might confound the interpretation of our results uh, is unclear at this moment. Okay, and um, thank you. And in terms of the quota system itself. Which um, quota? W well, you said that um, a major component of the political. Oh, the um, listing quota. Yes. Um, how about changes in the quota system? Because I think that formally it ended, uh, at least formally it ended before the the, the time horizon, horizon 2003. It ended before. Formally it is. No, no, no. Th so the quota is every year. Every year. But by the way, the quota of getting public listed does not affect where existing list li listed firms place their next subsidiary. There's no quota about where you should go set up next your plant. Mm -hmm. It's whether this, this firm becomes public listed in the first right. place. So, so, so that should not affect what we we're trying to look at here. Again, sorry. I, I, I'm, I'm not it's sure. It's ah, okay, okay. Okay, so, okay, okay. Nicole had a question. Okay, Nick, yeah. please. Uh, just ah. So Mike is trying hard to make sure. <laughs> Now, this is fun to ask questions during the talk. Um, yeah. two, two points um, on the original work. Um, you posit an ex-ante understanding by all the listed firms mm -hmm. that uh, cadre assignments are not static. Everyone's moving on. But then suddenly when you, uh, 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 you use a metric to understand their decisions as to where they set up their, what you call their subsidiaries, yeah. suddenly it has to be static because you wouldn't invest in a place unless you thought your connection was going to stay there forever. So I wonder if you could talk about sure. those, I think they're clashing assumptions with respect to the value, the long-term value right. of political connections. And as we know, that person who's Mayor Jia is going to be the mayor of another place. 
And the second thing is, um, can you tell us in the regressions where you're controlling for, I think Tammy was trying to get to this, uh, but aside from regulation, other um, normal considerations as to where you set up a subsidiary. You're a steel company. Yeah. You might move closer to the coal mines. Yeah. Um, you're uh, a milk company. So, you so might move closer yeah. to your urban markets, yeah. Yeah. Uh, et cetera. So I didn't see a control yeah. for that. Yeah. So. Right. So first of, uh, first of all, that's a very, very helpful, uh, very good point. Uh, we, I think we, we, we should be able to, do, to, uh, to control some of that, uh, so Nick, because we do, know, we, we do know how long this politician has been in every location at any point in time, right? So if it's, uh, if it's earlier in his term, um, probably that's going to be that's the, 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 the attraction of connected body will be greater. And in fact, when we, when we actually use the uh, information of uh, um, the year, actually related, but not quite, uh, quite not proving your point yet, to, to relate it, as, which is when we, when we look at how, how many years has lapsed since um, this politician moved away from headquarters, we do see a decay effect. So firms are more likely to follow those who are only recently left the location. That is definitely true. And we can and we should look into uh, the, 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 the point in the career in the candidate location. We can do that. And the other thing related regarding, um, regarding um, uh, industries. So, um, so number one, industry, if it, if industry effects are captured by firm from year fixed effect is in there. Uh, that, that being said, I think we could do a little bit more about exploring some of these industries, because some of industries are more natural resource dependent and rent seeking in nature. They should matter more than in, in other locations. That we can, we can definitely do that. Mary? I have a question about, um, whether or not we can assume that the decisions by listed firms, which are still predominantly state-owned, mm -hmm. so in a sense, you're saying that the politicians are moved by the HR organization, yeah. by the, organi yeah. the organization department, yeah. but firms' choices are market-based and sort of strategic. But it could also be the case that the central government is deciding these choices in tandem, mm -hmm. and the, the, the central government may have strategic reasons itself to um, for example, like a flying geese model of development might mean that successful mayors and party secretaries and successful state-owned enterprise managers are moved in tandem with each other perhaps to foster development in places in China where there's, um, where development is, is lagging behind the coastal areas. So I guess I'm just wondering, like, can we assume that, you know, the politicians are making political choices by the organization department and firms are making market-based choices? So I can, def I can definitely not rule out the possibility that uh, the central, uh, the Communist Party was trying to put a person in the place to, to make it to, for development purposes. And, and, and in fact, there are anecdotes around the country. Um, a, new, um, um, a new official in the place would try to attract commerce there, right? Um, and that part we cannot rule out. And the thing is, what, but what we can say, um, firms are making market-based choices, probably. So we, when we exclude all these centrally controlled SOEs, they are tightly controlled by central government, that the results still hold. Um, so what we can say is that to a, any given firm, so whether to attract any given, f like firm A founded by, by my Jia Corporation, whether to attract Jia Corporation to Yangzhou, that's not a concern of the, the organizer department. So it's probably sort of, I put this person in there to attract firms there, but to any given firm, whether this politician's locating location is really out of my control. So that's, that's what we are trying to utilize as a methodological, um, for methodological purposes. Um, but again, I agree, I agree with you that the purpose of where you put these, all these people, they're actually very complicated and they are less understood. Um, and we actually don't know much about them either. <laughs> I was wondering whether uh, the skill of the politician is involved in this, whether the politicians who attract a firm from the old city also attract more firms from elsewhere. It, 
I don't. I do not know. We don't have. We don't have a look at data about that. I think it's probably the case, especially in Chinese. We call that even if you're new to a position, you want to establish a track record fast, right? Like Xin Wen Shang Ren Sima Hua, they're going to do a lot of things to uh, to attract people there, and um, especially. But then the difference between my connected firms versus no firms that are just came to my place. Uh, the, the, there are things that you could do as a politician that with your connected buddies that you cannot with the other firms that are attracted to your location. But that's the most we could say at this moment. I, I was also thinking there was a kind of sent down youth firm to, to politician factor. The, the, the information would flow better. Yeah. So I have a question here. And then after oh, that, I'm oh going to quickly, uh, I'm going to quickly uh, wrap up. Right, right there. Yeah, I thought of, uh, yeah, to, uh, to what extent um, would factors like uh, real estate costs affect which which kind of the listed firms <coughs> would go to say political centers like Shanghai or Beijing, which yeah. would have very high yeah. uh, real estate costs? Um, it seems to me that it would determine to a large extent which kind of firms are yeah. establishing those connections and. Um, there's also the, the consideration, well, if you're a really big steel corporation, uh, you're not going to set up a, a big plant in the middle of Beijing. Mm -hmm. You're going to maybe yeah. set up an office. Right. So to what extent uh, have you looked into, say, the setting up of representative offices? Uh, in political centers. So, so I'm, I'm going to qu quickly answer that question, and I'm, I'm going to uh, move on to wrap, wrap things up. So, uh, re regarding real estate, I should know, <laughs> because the reason is um, um, uh, this is under our um, review and resubmit at the uh, our, one of our journals, and the reviewer asks us to collect the physical sort of at least gov local government's revenue collected from 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 land sales, and thinking that that's also matters. Um, and we have that in there um, as right now as a control, and I could look at my <laughs> results to tell you to what extent it matters. Um, um, and, and regarding the, um, so the sub new subsidiaries, we know their industry. They don't always occur in the same, same industry as the headquarter city. So at the new subsidiary level, um, there's a different set of is a different set of analysis, but we can look at who sets up what type of new subsidiaries. And in particular, um, at some point in time, I was trying to look at whether connected firms were more likely to set up subsidiaries and more in the, in the rent-seeking industry, like real estate. Um, and that's a different set of analysis, but we can say something about it. And uh, the answer is actually, not really. So it's, it's a little bit surprising. But very quickly, let me just I have, a, I have a, about two minutes left. Um, so what our results shows us is that your um, the cultural well the economic distance for political connection indeed help firms to reduce the concerns over economic and, and political or administrative distance, but they don't do much to uh, alleviate concerns over cultural distance in a way that we measure them. Okay, um, um, should I say this? Okay, so let me give you a few anecdotes. These are, I hope they don't mislead you because these are all, all from con convicted cases. <laughs> what, they, what they show is that <laughs> the, the connected firms go into the new location and be granted with all the, all the favors, such as the monopoly of a local industry or, uh, or, or, or really desirable land, um, and later, only later to be uh, convicted to be of. Um, but again, this is, I, I don't want to leave you with this, maybe I should not show, show this. I don't want to leave you <laughs> with this idea that connected, um, uh, connected firms go to location only to seek rents. Sometimes, as Mary pointed out, they were there, they were attracted there in order to, to, to make more salient investment and develop, to, to, to contribute economic development. And going back to this point um, um, about what subsidiaries do in a separate analysis, we were actually surprised to find that in general across the board, connected firms, they are not more than others, uh, to, uh, more, more likely than other firms to set up real estate firms in their connected co locations. Mm -hmm. Um, which is a little surprising. And they are slightly more likely to make bigger investment 
in the subsidiaries that they, um, they, they subs which I don't show you here. Um, those are a set of results that we are still trying to grapple with because if you are anything familiar with the economic approach of uh, political connection, it's dominant, just what we're talking about this morning, it's dominated by just one word, rent seeking. Anything that proves not rent seeking, <laughs> there must be wrong with your methodology. <laughs> um, so I think I'm out of time. So with that, I will thank so much for all the feedbacks and I look forward to continuing this conversation. Okay, sorry about that. Thanks. Uh, are there any cases where the politician become farm manager or vice versa? Oh, oh, the politician politician become, become a farm manager or the, the other way? So first of all, if you are SOE, a lot of these SOE leaders, they are politicians, right? They are former politicians. They are in this Carter system. They, are, they have their own ranks and all that. Um, and so yes, uh, a lot of SOEs, a lot of them, their, their leaders are former politicians. But whether they can go back to politics, that's a different question. Robin, does it work goes the other way around? Uh, that's, that is not obvious. So by the way, I'm just gonna say something about, so Nick commented, oh, it's good to ask questions during the talk. So in, the, in, in my world, this is world, uh, it's always, we, we, we will always need questions during the talk because otherwise it's, it's an indicator that lost the audience and that's bad, how bad a talk went is no questions. Yes. Thank you. Um, so um, my question is on the uh, measurement of political connection. Yeah. I think by this measurement, you show that uh, usually people perceive uh, political connection as a resource. So now it can be a liability and it can backfire. Um, my question is, uh, what if you measure it, um, uh, you focus on the ties between the, uh, uh, the firm leaders and, the, uh, for example, Department of Commerce or you know, the banking system. Yeah. So it's a little bit different. These yeah. ministries are, yeah, they're not under the pressure of local uh, yeah. unemployment and uh, they don't worry as much about the rotation because they are more uh, career uh, officials instead of political officials. And um, so in those circumstances, is the story gonna be different? So what I'm saying is, that it, is it possible that you know, for different types of yeah. political connection, there's gonna be different uh, causal mechanisms behind it? This is, yep. That's a totally valid point, which is that if my con connected buddy is not responsible to solve unemployment, but instead is in charge of banks and other things, uh, this, th this concern is all gone. That is definitely true. Um, and I agree with you um, on, um, on that. And, but then I don't want to say it's kind of conflicting with this political favor. It's just the other party may demand something else, not, not to solve the unemployment problem. Oh, the question. Thank you for the great presentation. I have two questions. So first, briefly, I just want to hear about how you measure the unemployment rate because it's a tricky measurement. Uh, second, uh, another related question is about this um, modifying impa impact of unemployment rate on the effect of political connection on firm locations. Um, so what, what fact? What the, the interactive effect of the firm locate uh, the political connection and unemployment rate. Yeah. So I'm wondering um, in high uh, in local in in province uh, in the when the unemployment rate is really really high does political connection still matter or does it just is it elevated to the extent that it goes to a negative it, it has a negative impact right. on the location choices right so that's a that's a great question unemployment rate we actually took it from the public list officially released data and that unemployment rate is not comparable to those in the u.s because they don't account for migrant workers in the in the location and they don't count for uh, newly graduate new graduates right and i was asking my co-authors uh, jiang yu from beijing university he's our he's 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 our source of any data related to china i was like can we get u.s comparable unemployment rate, he said, it, it definitely exists. It's higher up. You, just, <laughs> you, you cannot get it. Um, so what I can say is that, so here it, we are actually using the unemployment rate, if you assume that is the way it generated, is different from the US, but it's the same across China, then we're just using the variation of the still, 
it reflects the extent to which at least the, the residents in the cities um, experience different type of uh, unemployment rate, right? So that's the best we could say. Um, so regarding um, um, the, the, so our results, I think is, so we don't have a theory of whether from some more likely to go to a, to a place with high unemployment rate, unemployment rate, regardless of political connection. That will be the main effect on unemployment rate. It is negative, uh, positive. It's probably positive. Um, so, because without political connection, you can imagine, you c there's a place with unemployment rate, you probably can go there on a higher labor, cheaper cost, for example, right? So that would become a draw. Um, so we're, 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 what we're trying to argue is that when unemployment rate coupled with connection, that's when this location becomes less desirable. But we, have, we do have a theory about whether un what happens to unemployment rate alone. Uh, hi. Um, so I presume there's literature out there um, that's more qualitative based on surveys, interviews, focus groups, and I'm wondering, and you alluded a little bit to some of it at the beginning, overall then, how do you think your findings stack up against what we know when people actually explain why they've made locational decisions? Right. Um, so first of all, regarding location choices, I'm not aware of, of, of studies that look at location choices and political connections. So those are related. I can, so there are probably, probably four papers in economics that are related to this. One is the Schleifer reasoning paper, which is a theory to say why politicians want to impose that on their connect connected papers, or connected firms. And then the Bertrand's paper um, is unpublished about Fran France. Um, so that one was a, uh, was really studies like election election cycles. You are not into not about not about where you go as a firm, but but about w how much how many people you hire in the location during an election cycle. And then my co my former colleague in there they had uh, they looked at the Brazil, and again that's a um, that's like a bank lending um, in two certain regions in during around the political cycle. So I think the mechanism, we share similar mechanisms, but none of them actually give us predictions about location choice of firms. That's what, I, what, what, what so far, that's what we have seen of uh, the literature. Are there no more questions? Please join me in thanking Professor Diablo. <laughs> 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 <laughs>